Hey Android developers, I'm Sumit Jandel. Have you heard about the magic of Firebase Dynamic Links and want to learn how to add them into your app? Well, look no further. We're going to give you the goods on getting started with Firebase Dynamic Links right here in this episode of Firecasts. Firebase Dynamic Links. They're deep links that work the way you want them to. With a single link, you can take users directly to your app on Android or iOS, or to your app's Play Store or App Store to install the app if it isn't installed already. And better yet, that link survives the app installation process, so your app can still grab the original link context after your users have finished installing your app, and you can take them exactly where you want them to go in your app right after they finish installing it. Pretty cool, right? Yes, it is. In fact, we should build a Firebase Dynamic Link right now. Now, you can actually start using Firebase Dynamic Links by completing three very simple steps. Sound too good to be true? It's not. Setting up Firebase Dynamic Links is surprisingly easy. First, we'll need to do some configuration on both the Firebase console and in our Android project to start using Firebase Dynamic Links. Next, we'll actually create a real dynamic link. And finally, we'll receive a dynamic link in our own app and add code to handle taking the user to the right section of our app when they click on that dynamic link. Now for this video, we're going to focus on steps one and two. And we'll go over receiving a Firebase dynamic link in the next part of this video series. So stay tuned for that. Now before we go into these steps to set up our Firebase dynamic links, it might be helpful to understand just how these links work and how they get passed into your app. So let's take a moment to talk about that. So one part of how Firebase dynamic links work is very similar to app links. Now you might already know app links, and you might not. But if not, don't worry. Here's all you need to know about them. App links provide a mapping between links on your website to your Android app. This is great when you have a website with a whole lot of content that your users might want to view directly on the web, but for which you could also provide an even deeper and more contextualized experience within your installed Android application. So if a user clicks on a link pointing to your website on their Android device and has your app installed, AppLinks will say, hmm, do we want to bring this user to an Android app instead? If the mapping is there, AppLinks can bring the user to your app. And if your app isn't installed, they'll just go to the website directly. One of the key things that allows AppLinks to do this is by looking up an assetlinks.json file. This file contains the mapping for all the URL patterns from your domain that should send the user to your app. And it lives at your domain name slash dot well dash known slash assetlinks.json. Now, as you might have guessed, Firebase Dynamic Links work in a very similar way to app links. Based on matching URL patterns, Firebase Dynamic Links will know to take your users who click on a dynamic link to your Android app or directly to the web. Now, you might be thinking, Wait a minute, I don't have AppLinks configured. I don't have an assetlinks.json file. No, but don't worry about that. You don't need to have them configured. One nice thing about the way Firebase Dynamic Links works is that the links are hosted on a customizable subdomain that looks a little something like this. Note the .page.link subdomain. Firebase actually creates something like a mini website at this subdomain automatically to host your Firebase Dynamic Links. And on that mini website, it also includes an automatically generated assetlinks.json file, all ready to map your dynamic links straight to your app. So you don't need to worry about creating one yourself. On the other hand, maybe you already are using app links in your app. And you're like, hey, Submit, I already have app links configured. Can't I reuse them in Firebase Dynamic Links? The answer is yes. And it's actually pretty easy to set up. We'll talk about that in the second video in this series when we talk about receiving dynamic links into your app. So if you are using app links, just stay tuned. We've got you covered. OK, now that we know a bit more about how Firebase dynamic links actually work, I think we're ready to start creating some. Let's go through those three steps I mentioned to get our first Firebase dynamic links working. The first step is the configuration steps, both in your Android project and in the Firebase console. Now, I've already set up and configured a Firebase project with my Android app that I'll be working with here to set up our Firebase dynamic links. The project I've set up is a language learning app called Learn Miwok, 
a Native American language originating in what is now Northern California. If you've ever taken Android courses on Udacity, it'll probably be familiar to you. So I'll go ahead and use this one for this Firecast. Having created and configured a Firebase project yourself yet, no problem. Just check out this video for more details on configuring a Firebase project on Android and come right back here when you're done. One quick note, if you do follow the video up there to create and configure your Firebase project, when setting up your SAW certificate fingerprints, note that Firebase Dynamic Links requires using a SHA-256 fingerprint instead of a SHA-1 fingerprint, as shown in that video. So be sure to add the SHA-256 fingerprint to your project as well. OK, we've got a Firebase project and Android app ready. So let's now set up our app to enable Firebase Dynamic Links. We'll start by first configuring our Android project. So we've got our project open here in Android Studio and the handy Firebase developer docs available to us. First, I'll need to add the Firebase Dynamic Links dependency to my Android project. And I can do that like so by copying this here dependency into my app level build.gradle file. Once we've done that, we just need to sync our project with the updated Gradle files, and we should be ready for our next step. Next, I'll go into the Firebase console to configure our Firebase project and provide Firebase with a bit more information about which domain I would like to use for my dynamic links. I'll start by going to the Firebase console and selecting my project. Next, let's select dynamic links from the menu just down below here. Now, before you hit that big blue get started button, it's important to take note of the consent form there. We'll want to make sure our app is properly configured with the package name we intend to use as these will publicly be available once we start creating our first dynamic links. If you've already created a project or followed the previously mentioned video guiding you through it, you should already have a package name set and ready to go. If it's not one that you want to be made public after creating your first dynamic links, go ahead and change that first before moving ahead. Similarly, if your Firebase project is also connected to an iOS app, you'll want to make sure the bundle ID and team ID are appropriately set. Otherwise, let's do as the big blue box says and click Get Started. The first thing Firebase will ask us is what subdomain you'd like to use for your Firebase project. One really cool thing to mention here is what happens if you don't want to use a .page.link subdomain, but instead want to use your own domain name, like myawesomecompany.com. Well, here's some exciting news. Firebase Dynamic Links actually supports using your own custom domains. Setting up a custom domain requires a few additional configuration steps that might be too much to get into for this first getting started video. So we'll use the .page.link subdomain instead. Don't worry though, we will be covering how to set up Firebase Dynamic Links using custom domains in an upcoming video in this series. So stay tuned for that. And if you really, really want to use custom domains for your dynamic links now, just check out the blog post and documentation links in the description and you'll be on your way. For now, we'll use a .page.link subdomain. Now there are a couple of things to note when you go about choosing the subdomain you want to use for your dynamic links. First, remember that this should be a subdomain specific to this Firebase project. So rather than using something like your company name, I'd recommend using something like your app name. Also note that depending on which domain name you choose, there may be additional verification steps needed to make sure that you are indeed the owner of the name in the subdomain name, so you can't register something like youtube.page.link. Good try, though. In my case, I've chosen learnmiwok.page.link, and you'll want to choose something that works for your project, too. Once you've selected a suitable name, hit Continue, and bam, your Firebase Dynamic Link subdomain and mini web page should be set and ready to go. In fact, you can even check to see that the correct assetlinks.json file was generated by visiting this newly created web page at the name you chose dot page dot link slash dot well dash known slash assetlinks.json. So go ahead and do that now. For our Learn Miwok project, we can see the assetlinks.json file right here at learnmiwok.page.link slash dot well dash known slash assetlinks.json. The assetlinks.json file provides a configuration for handling all URLs that are sent to this domain and redirecting to my Android app designated by the Android package name com.sumichandel.miwok. If you followed up until this point in the video, you should see the same thing here in the assetlinks.json file living at your Firebase Dynamic Links subdomain with your Android package name. 
Okay, now that we've created the subdomain we're going to use, tested that the assetlinks.json file was correctly created, completed our configuration steps, we're now ready to move to step two, creating our very first dynamic link. Note, there are many ways to create Firebase dynamic links, including creating them programmatically. This can be done using our client libraries or REST APIs, and most likely will be the way you'll create most of your own dynamic links. We'll be covering that in more detail in another video. For now, we'll go for the easiest and most straightforward method for creating a dynamic link, creating them straight from the Firebase console. Creating dynamic links via the console is great for when you want to create a link that you can easily promote in a social media campaign to bring your users to a warm user experience or take them through some kind of promotion flow within your app. So let's do that. So now that we've got a subdomain, all we need to do is click this nifty new dynamic link button and we're off to the races. Here you can see that the subdomain we've created is already filled in with the domain field, and we also have a pre-populated short link that we can go ahead and use. If you were going to use this dynamic link for promotional purposes, you could change that to something more meaningful, like promo or summer sale. For my example, I'll use the word learn for a learning campaign and put that here and then click next. Now we're presented with the section to name our dynamic link for tracking purposes. I'll use Learn Miwok, since that's what I'll be using this dynamic link to help users do. And then just above that, we have the Deep Link URL box. Hmm, what does this mean? So the Deep Link URL is the data that actually gets passed to your Android or iOS app when your dynamic link is clicked. You might think this would be a JSON blob or something, but it isn't. And that's because Firebase dynamic links require that your Deep Link is a well-formatted URL that leads to an actual website so that if a user who isn't on Android or iOS clicks on your dynamic link, they'll be taken to a real website on their browser and still have a good experience. If your company has a website with content that very closely mirrors what's in your app, here would be an ideal place to use those web page URLs as your deep link URL parameter. In fact, this situation is exactly when you might want to use app links. So if you already have them set up, you can reuse those deep link URLs here. The deep link parameter you set here will allow your Android or iOS app to get that deep link URL when a user clicks on your dynamic link from Android or iOS, or go straight to your web page in a browser experience if they're on some other platform. If you don't have real web pages that you can map to, you can just use any old URL here for your domain and redirect those back to something like your homepage. To make this easier, you can use the same root directory for any incoming dynamic links and set up your redirect rule to redirect any URLs to that root directory back to your home page. So for my deep link URL, I'll just use any old URL like https colon slash slash www.example.com slash and then pass in a URL parameter current page equal one and hit next, which takes me to the section for how we want the link to behave for iOS. Since I don't have an iOS app attached to this project, I'll leave this on open the deep link URL in a browser, which will open the deep link URL that I specified earlier. But if you did have an iOS app, you can select that here after configuring your iOS project for Firebase Dynamic Links. Oh, and if you're wondering how to do that, check out this video here when you're ready to set up your project for iOS. Now I'll hit next to get into the section for defining the link behavior for Android. Now there are a few options here. The first option is the primary behavior I'd like this dynamic link to have for Android, which would be to open my Android app. So I'll select that option and then select my Android app from the drop down like so. Next, I can choose what I would like to have happen if the app is not installed. Normally, this would be to take them to the Play Store to download the app. But if the user who clicked the link isn't running the minimum required version of Android to run my app, or if I have a Google Play Instant Experience available for my app, I might want to send the user there instead. The Google Play Instant Experience allows my user to get even faster access to the contextual call to action that we'd like them to experience. But I digress. So let's just leave it to sending users to my Android app and move on to the last section to create our dynamic link. Here, we have some advanced options we can set. The first part here is for adding social meta tags that can help improve the sharing experience for users who receive this dynamic link. 
we can provide a title, image, and description for our social meta tag parameters. Now these tags are used in two places. First, they are used in many popular social networks to populate the image view and text that will be shown in any social network posts along with this link. And second, they'll be shown in the preview interstitial on iOS devices that tell the user, hey, we're about to go to the App Store. Are you cool with that? When they click on that link. To provide the best experience in both cases, we'll definitely want to have these values filled in. So let me just get these filled in. Ah, all done. And now let's jump to the final section below on tracking a campaign for UTM parameters. These will let you specify the source, medium, and name of the campaign associated with this deep link. And this is used both in Play Store campaign tracking and in Google Analytics for Firebase. Finally, the Skip the App Preview page is an option to skip that, hey, we're going to the App Store preview interstitial I mentioned earlier on iOS. But also, as I mentioned earlier, that page can be really useful to provide a better user experience. So let's take their recommendation and not skip this preview page and leave this unchecked. And we are cleared for takeoff. I'll click on the Create button, and bam, we have our first dynamic link ready to go. All right, now there is some neat info and tools we can use to check out the details of the link we've just created and to see what flows a user who clicks on the link might see after they click on it. First, by clicking on the link details section, I can see the expanded dynamic link, including all the URL parameters that are added on that enable the magic of Firebase dynamic links. Whenever I create Firebase dynamic links by hand, this is a helpful reference guide that I'll often refer to to see what parameters I can use that I might want to add on to my link. Next, there's also this handy link preview we can click on this to help debug our dynamic link. And that will show you how the dynamic link will behave when a user clicks on it. For example, in this case, we can see that when an Android user clicks on the link, they'll be taken to the app itself if it's already installed, or to the Play Store if it's not installed already. For iOS or desktop users, they'll just go straight to the web link provided in the link parameter I specified earlier. OK, we've configured our project and created our first dynamic link. Now we just need to test it out. The easiest way to test a dynamic link is literally to click on it from an app like Gmail, Twitter, an SMS messaging app, or so forth. In this case, I've prepared a super handy app that basically just displays the Firebase dynamic link I just created on a clickable page. So I'll just load that up. Voila, the app is loaded with my clickable dynamic link. And I'll just click it. And bam, we've now jumped into our Learn Miwok language learning app, and it loaded to the current page. Now, you might have guessed that the fact that the Learn Miwok app is not just loading up from my dynamic link, but to the correct page, means that it actually received and unpacked a dynamic link. And you'd be correct. Good catch. We haven't talked about doing that part yet. But as I mentioned, this will be in a following video. In fact, it'll be in the very next video of this series, so stay tuned for that. So to recap, here's what we've checked out so far. We've learned a little bit more about how Firebase dynamic links work, and then performed the needed configuration steps to enable dynamic links in our project by adding the Firebase dynamic link dependency to our Android project and selecting the subdomain we want to use for our Firebase dynamic links. Then we created our very first dynamic link in the Firebase console, and then tested out that it actually opens up our app. Next up, Let's look at how we can actually receive and interpret a dynamic link in our app. The critics' reviews are in, and it's rated four stars. Best video about links on the internet. So stick around to check it out.